This lesson will cover the following topics. The operation of the particle filter. Particle filter regeneration. EOBD systems. The major problem with diesel engines remains the smoke or particles visible from the exhaust during high levels of acceleration. The particles are produced during the combustion phase, in the zones where the air-fuel mixture is too rich. The particles consist of a carbon nugget which supports various other solid or liquid elements. The average size of a particle is 0.1 micrometers. The particle filter is fitted to the exhaust pipe after the catalytic converter. The shape of the particle filter is similar to a conventional catalytic converter. The particle filter consists of a ceramic block impregnated with precious metals. The ceramic block is similar to that of a conventional catalytic converter. However, on the particle filter, half of the channels are blocked. The material between each channel is porous, allowing the exhaust gases to pass through. When the engine is running, the exhaust gases pass through the ceramic block. The particles are trapped in the walls and at the end of the blocked channels. This phase is called the collection phase. The injection computer permanently monitors the mass of particles contained inside the filter. The accumulation of particles inside the filter creates a resistance at the exhaust gas outlet. The differential pressure sensor measures the difference in pressure between the particle filter inlet and outlet. For an empty filter, the difference in pressure will be low. If the filter is full, the difference in pressure will be much greater. The differential pressure alone cannot determine the particle mass. In fact, the differential pressure is linked to the flow of gas inside the exhaust pipe. The computer calculates the exhaust gas flow volume in relation to the engine speed and other parameters. By linking the differential pressure to the flow of exhaust gases, the computer estimates the mass of particles inside the filter. When the engine is working hard, the particles are eliminated naturally. There is then a spontaneous regeneration. During high engine loads, the temperature of the exhaust gases increases. From temperatures of 350 degrees Celsius upwards, a catalytic reaction is produced between the nitrogen dioxide contained in the exhaust gases and the carbon in the particles. This reaction burns off the particles stored inside the filter. Spontaneous regeneration only occurs when driving at high speeds on the motorway. However, the injection computer is programmed to regenerate the filter during average engine loads. This programming will be detailed in the next section. In this section, we covered the following points. The particles are produced during the combustion phase, in the zones where the air-fuel mixture is too rich. The particle filter is fitted to the exhaust pipe after the catalytic converter. The particle filter consists of a ceramic block impregnated with precious metals. The design of the particle filter allows the particles to become trapped in the walls and at the end of the blocked channels. The differential pressure sensor measures the difference in pressure between the particles filter inlet and outlet. By linking the differential pressure to the flow of exhaust gases, the computer estimates the mass of particles inside the filter. Spontaneous regeneration only occurs when driving at high speeds on the motorway. When driving at low speed, the temperature of the exhaust gases is insufficient for spontaneous regeneration to take place. The injection computer has several programs to enable the required temperature to be reached in order to burn off the particles. The computer assesses the need for regeneration based on three criteria. The type of driving. The distance covered since the last regeneration. And the estimated mass of particles inside the filter.
Should the computer determine that it is necessary to regenerate the particle filter, it switches over to a specific injection mode. During normal operation, the fuel injection takes place in two stages. Pre-injection of a small amount of fuel before top dead center and main injection at top dead center. In specific injection mode, the pre-injection and main injection phases are offset. A post-injection phase also takes place after top dead center. Also, the computer continues to inject fuel during the deceleration phases. The delayed injection of diesel fuel produces large amounts of unburnt hydrocarbons. These unburnt elements are treated inside the oxidation catalyst, generating a large amount of heat. When the temperature of the exhaust gases exceeds 570 degrees Celsius, the particles are burnt in the gas's residual oxygen. During this regeneration phase, the EGR is deactivated. In fact, the EGR lowers the combustion temperature, which does not help the regeneration process. To assist in reaching the regeneration temperature, the computer actuates the electrical consumers to increase the engine load. Three temperature sensors allow the injection computer to check that the regeneration procedure is carried out correctly. Click on the first sensor. The sensor fitted upstream of the filter measures the temperature of the gases at the oxidation catalyst outlet. This measurement determines whether or not the catalyst priming temperature has been reached in order to begin the regeneration process. The sensor fitted downstream of the filter monitors the rise in temperature due to the combustion of the particles. This measurement checks the duration of the regeneration procedure and checks that it is carried out correctly. A sensor fitted to the turbocharger measures the temperature of the exhaust gases entering the turbine. The role of this sensor is to prevent too great an increase in the temperature of the gases, which is detrimental to the life of the turbocharger. An air flap is fitted inside the air inlet tract. The injection computer sends an RCO signal corresponding to the opening value required. The air flap adjusts the engine air intake during the regeneration phases and also adjusts the temperature of the particle combustion. When the engine is switched off, the flap acts as a damper valve to prevent engine vibration. In the situation where regeneration is impossible, the computer has several successive programs. Firstly, the computer deactivates the exhaust gas recirculation to restrict the production of additional particles. Secondly, a level 1 warning message appears on the instrument panel. This message encourages the driver to carry out a driving cycle, enabling a regeneration to be carried out. If the regeneration is still not carried out, there is a risk of the filter clogging. The stop warning light comes on. The engine operates in defect mode and it is impossible to carry out the regeneration procedure. In this case, the vehicle must be taken to a Renault dealer. If it is impossible to regenerate the particle filter, it is possible to carry out a regeneration procedure using the diagnostic tool. This command enables the particle filter to be regenerated when the vehicle is stationary. Before carrying out any regeneration procedure using the diagnostic tool, it is essential to make sure that the oil level does not exceed the max mark on the dipstick. In fact, when carrying out the operation, a thinning phenomenon increases the engine oil level. Important, it is essential to drain the engine oil after all regeneration operations carried out in after sales. Renault recommends the periodic replacement of the particle filter. In fact, a tiny amount of unburnt residue remains after each regeneration phase, which over time will clog the filter. Engines using a particle filter require a reduced oil change service interval. Consult the Vehicle Maintenance Service Book for details on the intervals for replacement of the particle filter and changing the oil. In this section, we covered the following points. 
The injection computer has several programs to enable the required temperature to be reached in order to burn off the particles. In specific injection mode, the pre-injection and main injection phases are offset. A post-injection phase also takes place after top dead center. When the temperature of the exhaust gases exceeds 570 degrees Celsius, the particles are burnt in the gas's residual oxygen. Three temperature sensors allow the injection computer to check that the regeneration procedure is carried out correctly. The air flap adjusts the engine air intake during the regeneration phases and also adjusts the temperature of the particle combustion. In the situation where regeneration is impossible, the computer has several successive programs. If it is impossible to regenerate the particle filter, it is possible to carry out a regeneration procedure using the diagnostic tool. Consult the Vehicle Maintenance Service Book for details on the intervals for replacement of the particle filter and changing the oil. Diesel vehicles complying with Euro 3 emissions standards are equipped with EOBD onboard diagnostic systems. With this system, computers are able to detect a fault which may cause the pollutant emissions to be higher than stated in the emissions standard. If a fault of this sort is detected, the computer switches on a specific warning light on the instrument panel, known as the MIL, or EOBD warning light. The injection computer carries out a constant diagnosis of the electrical circuits of components linked to it. In case of an electrical fault, the injection computer switches on the injection warning lights. Certain electrical faults may result in increased pollution. These faults concern the following components in particular. The injectors. The EGR solenoid valve. And the fuel pressure sensor. If the fault is detected in three consecutive trips, the EOBD warning light is activated. The injection computer performs a diagnosis of the pressure regulation function. If there is a fault on the high pressure circuit, the computer corrects the pressure regulator command. The pressure sensor informs the computer of the true pressure inside the rail. If the computer observes a difference between the programmed value and the true pressure, it diagnoses a fault. If the fault is detected in three consecutive trips, the EOBD warning light is activated. The injection computer also performs a diagnosis on the exhaust gas recirculation function. The computer compares the programmed opening value for the EGR value to its true value provided by the position sensor. Also, the airflow signal enables the computer to check that the recirculation is operating correctly. In the event of an inconsistency, the computer diagnoses a fault. If the fault is detected in three consecutive trips, the EOBD warning light is activated. The correct operation of the particle filter is also monitored by the EOBD system. The injection computer uses the differential pressure sensor. If the filter is clogged, the difference in pressure between the filter inlet and outlet increases. If the filter has a hole in it or if there is no filter, the difference in pressure between the inlet and outlet is zero. If the fault is detected in three consecutive trips, the EOBD warning light is activated. In this section, we covered the following points. With the EOBD system, computers are able to detect a fault resulting in polluting emissions above the standard. Certain electrical faults can result in increased pollution. If the fault is detected in three consecutive trips, the EOBD warning light is activated. The injection computer performs a diagnosis of the pressure regulation function. The injection computer performs a diagnosis of the exhaust gas recirculation function. The correct operation of the particle filter is also monitored by the EOBD system.